Thank you so much to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video. Have you, like all other Netflix users who haven't been living under a rock, watched the new documentary, The Social Dilemma? Did you also find yourself put off by the histrionics and lulled into a false sense of comfort that your internet use is perfectly fine because you have never watched Flat Earth conspiracy videos or broken a glass safe to get your phone? Well, stay tuned because in this video, I am going to cover what the documentary missed because we all have problems with our phone, but there's more we can do about it than the movie led us to believe. One of the things I think makes social media so dangerous is the instant feedback. So you post an Instagram photo, it instantly starts getting likes. You put something on your story, you instantly get views. You upload a video and it instantly starts getting comments. And yeah, the positive stuff is gonna give you a little dose of dopamine, but the negative response or even the response that wasn't quite as positive as you thought it would be, it's gonna bring you right down and there's just no reason to tie your emotions to such a meaningless and volatile metric. So something I do is I always make sure to give myself a day after posting something on Instagram to check how it's doing in terms of likes and comments. It kind of separates me from it emotionally a little bit. It allows me to move on with whatever else I need to do that day. And it's also a little bit of delayed gratification. Like if I post something that I'm really excited about and I think it's gonna get a good response, I can kind of build up that excitement if I wait until the next day to see how it performed. And also like if you're using Instagram for business, the results are just gonna be more accurate the next day. Like there's no point looking at incomplete analytics as soon as you post something. documentary made it seem like you just have zero power over what those three evil guys hiding behind your phone screen choose to show you but like generally your feed consists of the people you follow and you do have some power over that so once in a while one of my favorite things to do is to just ruthlessly clean out the list of people that I follow it is such a satisfying process and when you do it you realize that you weren't even seeing posts from a lot of the people that you're following because of the algorithm and so if you didn't notice that you weren't seeing their posts, you can probably unfollow them. You can also just silence people if you know them personally and don't want them to get upset. It doesn't mean you don't care about them, it just means that for your mental health, you need to not always be seeing the highlight reel of everything that they're up to. And there are other ways to keep in touch with people that are a lot more active and personal. Like writing telegrams, for example. And the third, possibly the most dangerous aspect of social media is the recommendations. So even when you try to curate who you follow, these apps will still try to suck you in by taking content from all over the internet and just throwing it at you. Don't let them. So for YouTube, it is ridiculously easy. I found this extension that you can download that literally just like erases your recommended feed. When you open up YouTube, all you see is the sidebar, the search bar. You can still go to your subscriptions. You can still search for specific videos or see what's trending but YouTube does not get to tell you what it thinks you should watch. For Instagram, it's harder. Personally, for me, it's pretty easy to just kind of avoid the Instagram Explore page, but that's not gonna work for everyone because social media can be very, very enticing and addicting and powerful. I did find this custom thing that you can download, but if you have iOS, you have to jailbreak your phone. Or finally, you can just delete the Instagram app and only use Instagram on your computer. So I deleted the Twitter app because it was very distracting for me. Once in a while, I'll go on Safari if I want to check what BTS is tweeting or what other people are tweeting about BTS, pretty much just tweets about BTS. But because I do that on Safari and I'm not even logged into my Twitter account, it makes it much more difficult to access and nowhere near as entertaining. I can't speak for other social media apps like TikTok because YouTube and Instagram are generally my main dopamine hits, but I'm sure you'll be able to find some sort of a workaround. And if you're not, you can always just delete the app because it's not permanent. If you miss it so, so much, you can bring it back, but it's always a good experiment to try. How would you feel feel if that app was not on your phone. You know when you pick up your phone to check the time or the weather and then you get distracted by something else and you start scrolling and then you forget why you picked up your phone in the first place. So something similar happens when you go on YouTube to see if your favorite creator uploaded a video, but then you end up falling down the YouTube rabbit hole into all these other channels. Or you go to a new site because you wanna learn more about some current event, but then you start clicking on clickbaity headlines that really aren't like valuable reporting. Well, do I have a solution for you? RSS feeds, and I don't know what 
RDF stands for, so don't ask me. Basically, instead of going to YouTube for videos and New York Times for news, you create an RSS feed that pulls just the content that you want to see from different sources, and it's kind of like designing your own magazine. I used to think that RSS feeds were just for old people to follow blogs, I'm just kidding. But they're actually really, really cool. So like you can make an RSS feed for a certain Instagram account, for news stories on a certain topic. So like if you live in Wisconsin and you wanna get news on the coronavirus in Wisconsin, you can set up a filter for stories with those keywords. You can make an RSS feed for a certain YouTube channel using tools like Zapier or If This Then That. There's a lot of different ways that you can hack this. So you can have your RSS feed include tweets that mention you or send your feed to your email every morning. I included some links to RSS tools in the description, but basically instead of allowing the algorithm to tell you what you see, you get to decide what you see. So there's a rule called the 100% rule that states that 99% is difficult, 100% is easy. So if you decide to, I don't know, not eat dairy for a month, saying that you're not gonna eat any dairy, like not a single cube of cheese, is a lot easier than being like, well, I'll try not to eat a lot of dairy, but I do love a good slice of cheese on a sandwich because leaving the door just a crack open invites excuses and internal debates like, should I eat the cheese? Should I not eat the cheese? That frankly is just a waste of time and energy. So setting clear rules for yourself can be a really powerful way to curb content consumption. So for example, with Netflix, you might set a rule that you only watch Netflix if you're watching it with other people. That way you get the fun of watching TV, but you also get that bonding experience and it kind of prevents you from using Netflix as an automatic reaction when you're bored or just need a pacifier. You could also set rules against accessing sites during certain times. For example, if your mornings are really productive, you might set yourself a rule that you're not going to check email until 10 a.m. Of course, with all of these rules, it's really helpful to have an accountability buddy or some sort of a tool so that you're not just relying on your willpower because you don't want to drain all of your willpower trying to fight the social media beast. So if you have a friend who's also trying to watch less TV, you can keep each other accountable and ask each other, did you watch Netflix today? You can use a content blocker that'll block certain websites when you need it to. Basically, just find tools and methods that make it as difficult as possible to engage in those bad habits. As you're using social media, pay attention to what makes you like go down that content rabbit hole or makes you not feel so great about yourself and try to find workarounds for those specific pain points. So for example, in Digital Minimalism by Cal Newport, there's a story of this girl who got herself a wristwatch, not a smartwatch, just a regular old stupid watch because she noticed that whenever she picked up her phone just to simply look at what the time was, she got sucked in by other apps. Okay, Google, what time is it? It's time for you to get a watch. If Instagram is generally okay for you, but it's those Instagram stories that really suck you in, then silence just the stories of everyone you follow. And then slowly you can start bringing back accounts of people whose stories you genuinely are interested in. If there is a Facebook group that you participate in, like my book club, you can create a bookmark. That's what I did because that book club is pretty much the only thing I do on Facebook. So that allows me to bypass my feed and go directly to the book club page. If there's some video that you keep referring to all the time instead of going to YouTube and typing in the search bar and then potentially being distracted by other videos along the way you can just bookmark that specific video and remember that none of these rules or deletions have to be permanent so like if you're studying for an exam and you really really need to focus you might decide to just cut off all social media cold turkey and then once you've taken the exam then you can bring it back into your life not all content is created equal, so you can't say like, oh, social media is bad, the internet is bad, technology is bad. So you have to constantly be asking yourself, like, is this valuable to me? And valuable doesn't necessarily mean productive, like entertainment can be valuable too. It could just be a meme account that brightens your day whenever it pops up into your feed, but it doesn't take you down that rabbit hole and drain hours of your time. Or it could be something that teaches you something and satisfies your curiosity. So thank you to The Great Courses Plus for sponsoring this video. It is a subscription-based learning service where you can listen to lectures and courses from Ivy League professors and experts from places like National Geographic and the Smith, 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 Smithsonian. 
I've literally visited those museums. I should know how to pronounce them. It's been more than a year since I graduated high school and I honestly kind of miss learning, especially now that my brother's doing online school. Like I'm low key jealous of him. But then I remember that, oh right, I didn't like a lot of my classes in high school. So learning on the great courses plus is like school, but if school were only the things you were interested in and there was no homework and no tests and no schedule. So basically nothing like school. So one course I'm taking is money management skills because school fails spectacularly to teach you actual personal finance. And I've been trying to work on that lately. So like I recently started my retirement savings account and saving for like an emergency safety net. I also remember I really liked learning about religions in world history class. So I'm currently watching this course on Buddhism as well. And then I just have this gigantic watch list and I don't know if I'll ever get to all of these. There's just so many different courses that you can do from your basics like business and photography all the way to the history of Christmas music and cake decorating. They're offering a free trial, so head to the link in the description, just thegreatcoursesplus.com slash theblisted and let me know what courses you guys do. Technology is always trying to make things easier, better, faster, stronger. <laughs> and I think that has gotten us to a bad place because we are now realizing that sometimes we need things to be terribly inefficient. So like with my budgeting spreadsheet, I have to enter all of my transactions manually and I love doing that because I don't want some app doing all of that, taking care of all my money behind the scenes automatically. Especially as these days we are using less and less cash and buying something often takes just the click of a button and so you never really feel the weight of the purchase. So when it comes to phones and social media, you can also try to make things difficult for yourself. If there are certain social media apps you rely on as pacifiers for whenever you're bored, delete them from your phone and only go on them on the computer because that'll take a lot more effort. You also don't want everything on your phone to be so easily accessible at your fingertips. So I'll be uploading a new phone tour this Friday and I'll show you exactly how I set up my phone. But like seriously, just a couple of simple tricks have made my phone so much less fun to use and I use my phone way way less but basically the gist of it is like if an app is distracting make yourself work to access it put it somewhere where you have to swipe and swipe to reach it and disable it from appearing in the spotlight search function so that that's not a shortcut you can use to cheat hide away apps in your folder so that you have to have a specific reason for going and looking for that app rather than just opening it out of boredom you can also rearrange your apps for frequently so that your brain doesn't get used to it and that your fingers don't just like mindlessly go to distracting apps. They say that you shouldn't just try to cut out a bad habit without also replacing it with a better one. So one trick you can do is put a more helpful app in the place where a distracting app used to be. So for example, maybe you deleted Netflix from your phone kudos to you, now replace it with something like the Great Courses Plus app so that anytime your brain wants to see what's new on Netflix, it'll be shocked when it accidentally opens up the playlist of courses that you're taking. Making the internet browsing experience a little slower and a little more annoying is also really effective. So there's this extension for your computer called Pause that makes you wait five seconds before accessing distracting sites. And that little moment to rethink whether you should really be visiting that website often keeps you from going there altogether. So there is even more that I wanted to cover in this video. I was going just a tad bit overboard writing the script. I really wanted in this video to just provide like the practical hacks, techniques, and tricks to help you use your phone and social media less. But I also have like a lot of criticisms of the documentary and like philosophical thoughts on this topic. So to satisfy my desire to talk and talk and have people listen to me talk, I started my own podcast. It wasn't quite that narcissistic. I've been thinking about starting a podcast for a while to like share more in-depth conversations about the stuff that's been interesting to me. And because today is National Podcast Day, I thought it was the perfect day to finally start. So my first episode is currently up. It's a more like targeted response to the documentary and specific reasons why I thought that it missed the mark. I also talked about the specific hurdles of using social media as a content creator, how I exactly use social media and like what accounts and channels I follow. I also talked about why I don't really watch YouTube anymore. So you can find out all about that and other interesting things in my first podcast episode. 
So the link is in the description to check that out. Please subscribe to the podcast and share it with your friends. I have like some graphics on my Instagram stories to make it easier to share. It really means a lot to me. I hope you enjoy it. And if you have any ideas for topics we should cover or guests that I should invite, please, by all means, let me know. I need ideas. So thank you so much for watching this video. Please give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you think that my videos will add value to your life. Otherwise, please curate your social media and make the intentional choice not to subscribe to me. That wasn't even sarcastic. I genuinely don't want to be like a negative, harmful distraction in your life. So yeah, I'll see you next week with a new video, hopefully, if you do decide to stick around on this channel. Bye! I'm gonna just like pick up my phone and like be looking at it, okay? Okay, I've already started the video.